The trouble with all steam locomotives, part 13, to ring or not to ring, that is the question. In the lathe at the moment, I'm about to turn the grooves in the piston, which will accept the pair of cast iron piston rings. I'm showing this sequence in real time. I'm using a high speed steel parting tool and I'm running the lathe in back gear, so it's going quite slowly. If I was to run the lathe too fast, two things would happen. Firstly, the high speed steel tool would blunt very quickly and the surface finish would take on a shiny crystalline appearance. So in the home workshop, keep the speed low and then everything should be fine. I need to make two grooves in this piston that are slightly deeper than the thickness of the piston rings and the grooves need to be an eighth of an inch wide. The parting tool that I have for the Boxford is not one eighth of an inch wide. So first of all, I'm cutting a couple of grooves to the correct depth. Or in this case, at the moment, slightly under the correct depth. Later on, I'll use one of the piston rings as a gauge to show me the depth that I need. All I'm doing at the moment is making two grooves equidistant from the outer edge of the piston. And as usual, I'm fully aware that this is bad engineering practice because, once again, I'm doing it by eye. In any case, it doesn't really matter where these grooves are in this piston. But by the time I've widened these grooves to accept the piston rings, they will both be in the same place at either side of the piston. This is a slow process and it requires quite a lot of patience. And as you can see, the centre is still in place holding everything rigid. And here I've moved the position of the parting tool to the left to widen the groove. And before diving to the bottom of the groove, to try the piston ring for size, it's just off camera at the top. As it turned out, it was still under size. Now I'm machining the groove to the same depth. You have to be very careful when using piston rings. You do not want them to be sloppy and you do not want them to be tight. Even though I intend to fit cast iron rings to this piston, as shown on the drawing, the same tolerances for the depth and width of the piston, whether it be silicone rubber or soft packings, is the same. It has to be correct. And if you want to see these dimensions from an engineering point of view, there are lots of data sheets full of them. If you just look online, machining tolerances for cast iron piston rings or machining tolerances for silicone rubber type piston rings. Once again, when I stop the lathe in this sequence, I'm checking the width of the groove. The groove needs to be one eighth of an inch wide, but there has to be a tolerance to allow the piston ring to float slightly. Because both the piston and the rings are made from cast iron, there's no expansion or contraction problem. Here, once again, at the top of the picture, I'm trying the piston ring in position. And I think the fit is about right now at this side, so I'll turn my attentions to the other side. One of the biggest problems with engineering is the fact that it is an accumulator. The more complicated that the piece of work becomes, the more nerve-wracking it is to actually work on it, because if you get it wrong, you have to go back to the beginning. It's a little bit like playing a computer game. Oh dear, I did that wrong, I've died, and the computer resets and you start again from the beginning of the sequence. And for that reason, any beginners watching this really need to do this on a scrap piece of metal. I'm working on what's going to be the finished item, and if I make a mess of it, well, I make a mess of it. But to a beginner, this can be a disastrous thing to do. So get a scrap piece of cast iron, machine grooves in it, and try fitting piston rings to it. And that is exactly how I learnt to do things many years ago. And the irony of it is, I never took metalwork as a subject at school. I took Latin. And of course that proved useful, didn't it? I'm full of self-taught, and I used a method called make it three times. For instance, I once made some connecting rods for a simplex. So I very carefully marked out the positions on the metal and drilled the holes in the right place for the bushes at the end. The big problem being, I'd marked out the position for the bushes in entirely the wrong place. Scrap part number one. My piston rod is far too long. I did this on purpose because it's only now I need to match it up to the length of the original piston's piston rod. So I'm just using a ruler pressed on top of the original piston rod and now I make a mark at the other side on the new piston rod. And remember the saying, measure twice and cut once, that's what I'm doing now. Time to do a test fit of the piston in the bore before I fit the rings. And the good news is, that is a very good piston fit. It's a couple of thou undersize and I want it that way, whether I'm fitting cast iron piston rings, soft packings 
or even silicone rubber piston rings. I'm very pleased with this so far. And now it's time to fit the piston rings. This can be difficult and you will break them. I've broken one or two cast iron piston rings over the years when I've fitted them to the piston. You have to persuade a piece of cast iron, the ring, to fit over a size that is too big for it, the piston. Cast iron doesn't bend too well really. It's really good in compression, but it's not designed to be bent. But anyway, if you're careful with it, sort of firm but gentle, you'll get there in the end. Back to the story about making things three times. My first attempt at marking out was a failure. My second attempt was okay, and I drilled and reamed the holes to the correct size for the bushes. I then finished the connecting rod, and everything was good. Until I drilled the oil hole in the big end. Can you believe it? The drill wandered and broke, and that made a mess of it, so that was number two scrapped. I finally got it right the third time. In this clip, I'm using my scriber to check the position of the hole in the piston rod, using the old piston and rod as a guide. After which, I fitted the new piston rod into the crosshead and drilled all the way through 5 30 seconds of an inch. And here, I'm very carefully using a taper reamer. This is a 5 30 seconds of an inch taper reamer, but a word of caution. If you push the reamer all the way through, then the thick end of the taper pin that you use will be level or below the level of the hole in the crosshead. I don't want the pin to stick out much at all, and the taper pin that I'm using is far too long, so I'm going to cut it off here, and as you can clearly see, the thicker part of the taper pin is just above the level of the crosshead, and the other end is also the same, so you can tap it out if you want to. I've said this before, we all make mistakes, said the Dalek climbing off the dustbin, I've made the classic mistake of forgetting to put the cylinder cover in place before fitting the crosshead. So here I'm fitting the crosshead permanently. Any dings and dints on the crosshead are not my doing. I'm very accurate at hammering pins into holes. Here's the finished assembly with the piston rings fitted. Now I need to fit the piston complete with the piston rings into the cylinder. And here's a good tip, I'm using a couple of cable ties to compress the ring in the groove. I could have used one cable tie, but I didn't have one long enough. This works perfectly well though. A gentle tap with a soft hammer at the crosshead end pushes the piston into the cylinder. I could probably slide the cable tie back to compress the second ring. But instead, I'm knocking the crosshead backwards to remove the piston from the cylinder because it's too tight. I refitted the piston without the rings, and this is a general arrangement. The slide bar's not fixed yet. So what am I going to do about this? The piston fits in the cylinder fine, but it doesn't when it has the rings on, because the rings are exactly one and a half inches in diameter. Should I hone out the cylinder to a larger diameter, that would take quite a while, or should I machine the piston, fit soft packings, or even silicone piston rings? I will think on this further, but that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.